Good morning, everybody. This is Dr. Lee with another episode of Derm Path Made Easy. Today, we're going to talk about a very rare form of leukocytoclastic vasculitis known as erythema elevatinum diutinum. Now, this lesion is an interesting form of leukocytoclastic vasculitis because it forms these interesting nodules, plaques, and papules. And typically, the way, it, let's take a look at clinically, this is how it typically presents. Uh, one presentation here, this is a more of a plaque form. Now, these lesions are typically bilaterally symmetric. Um, they can be from anywhere from pink. Here you have, you know, sort of this is another annular ring almost like structure. Uh, so red to pink, um, often purple. Uh, papules, nodules, or plaques. And you can see how symmetric it is on this picture here. Both bilateral, bilateral hands are involved. Um, this picture was actually taken from a Facebook group that I'm on, just borrowing it. <clears throat> um, and you can see that it's usually on the extensor surface of joints, commonly on the hands where it starts. Um, here you can see it on the back and also the back of the elbows. So what, right. Um, So the lesion, you can see here from, from a path perspective, you can see that it's certainly a, a lifted nodule. Um, and it looks like here we probably are on acral skin. Um, the, the surface of the lesion here is, uh, shows this orthohyperkeratin. And the, you can see that the dermis is an extremely bu busy appearance and probably pretty fibrotic, which is all this you know, red to pink stuff in the middle. <clears throat> Let's come to higher power to take a look. You can see the cardinal findings of uh, leukocytoclastic vasculitis, and that's uh, fibrinoid destruction of the vessel wall. So here we have fibrin deposits. See that very brightly pink and eosinophilic um, pattern there? And then surrounding it, you have these other uh, inflammatory cells. Here, these are some you know, granul granulocytes or neutrophils, sort of surrounding the, uh, these vessels, causing uh, destruction of the vessels by this uh, fibrinoid destruction of the blood vessels. And you can also make out here we have probably some red cell travestation, these uh, small red dots. And so this is a pretty remarkable case here. And here you have uh, more of this fibrinoid destruction of vessel walls. Now, there's a the reason this is called leukocytoclastic vasculitis. Leukocytoclasia just means nuclear fragmentation. And if, if I can bring this close enough, perhaps you can make out um, many of these neutrophils have uh, have have had their cellular uh, cytoplasm actually fallen and broken apart, and that's what gives this really busy appearance from low power. And um, okay. So these lesions are, the, the underlying etiology is not, not really certain. However, um, it's thought that there is probably an immune, immune complex mediated vasculitis um, due to some sort of chronic antigen exposure. Uh, the types of people that get these types of lesions are individuals with chronic diseases like HIV, other types of systemic illnesses, and various uh, hematologic dyscrasias. Um, and also chronic infection, I believe, with strep and E. coli have been associated with this, with this lesion. Also, um, IgA and IgG ANCAs are all, have also been associated with this. And on the, on the head, neck, and face, this lesion is fairly in, indistinguishable from granuloma fasciale, fasciale a very related um, lesion. So early on, these lesions start out as... Uh, indistinguishable from any other types of leukocytoclastic vasculitis. So you see the leukocytoclasia, that busy kind of um, stuff going on in the dermis, uh, fibrinoid destruction of vessel walls, and usually red cell extravasation. But as these lesions progress over time, um, it starts becoming pretty fibrotic. And you can see that this is already all this uh, pink collagen bundles circling this thing have, have also um, or have already progressed somewhat, and now you have this fibrosis. Eventually, um, you want th there will be no residual remaining areas showing any vasculitis, um, and instead it'll be replaced by fibrosis entirely. Um, 
and you can see here it's already starting to occur sort of this whirling pattern of fibrosis and I have a couple of pictures taken from uh, Dr. Phil McKee's textbook I couldn't find one in my collection but you can see here this is um, you know in the dermis here there's very very little uh, hints that this was prior LCV um, instead you get this kind of whirling like fibrosis almost keloidal in parts now if we come to this one this is a little higher power image of the the same shot and you can see what I'm talking about you have maybe some slight hints of some leukocytoclasia and other inflammatory cells but really no um, evidence of any kind of fiber deposits within vessels or even red cell extravasation for that matter and I think that is pretty much covers it so we'll come back to the to how to make the diagnosis from low power um, so this is different than other forms of leukocytoclastic vasculitis because, as you can see, this is a lifted dome-shaped uh, papule or, and nodule. Uh, typical leukocytoclastic vasculitis does not do this. So I see this nodule here, and all of these things in the middle here, these are all sort of blood vessels and... Um, you get that kind of hint that something else is going on in here. You go to higher power, it's very, very busy throughout here, and again, that's due to the presence of leukocytoclasia or the nuclear fragments of neutrophils. And then we come to higher power, and you can see clearly that you have fibrinoid destruction of the vessel walls, and you may be able to make out some, some red cell extravasation. And then uh, that, that pretty much gets you the diagnosis. Um, Thanks again, guys. Uh, if you guys are enjoying this and it's helping you, please like, subscribe, and share it with other people that you think it may help.